What is the expected number of rolls of a fair die required to see all six outcomes? Second question, what is the population variance of the number of rolls of a fair die required to see all six outcomes? Well, in this particular case, I am going to start with a realization of what this experiment might look like. And in this particular realization, I'm just going to take a fair die and roll it repeatedly. So let's say on the first roll, I come up with a 3. And then on the next roll, I get a 2. And on the next roll, I see another 3. That is followed by a 1. And then a 6. And then a 5. Notice that already I've seen almost all of the observation. I've seen everything here but a 4. So I'm just waiting until I get my 4. Let's say I roll a 2. Then let's say I get lucky. I see a 4. Well, in this particular case, it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It took x equals 8 rolls for me to see the um, 6 different outcomes. So in this particular case, I'm going to let the random variable x be the number of rolls required to see all of those six outcomes. And I'm going to write it in the following fashion. I'm going to write it as x1. And x1 is the number of rolls to see my first unique outcome. And that, of course, is the 3. And then x2 will be the number of rolls required to see the second unique outcome. And in this case, it only took me one roll to see my second unique outcome. So that's x2. And then x3 is the number of rolls to see my third unique outcome. Now, to see my third unique outcome, which is 1, it took two rolls to get to that. And so on it goes. So x4 is the number of rolls to see my fourth outcome, number of additional rolls to see my fifth outcome, and number of rolls to see that sixth unique outcome. And this will be the random variable x. Now I'm going to try to figure out the distribution of these things. What is the distribution of x1, the number of rolls to see my first unique outcome? Well, I have to have a unique outcome on that first roll. So this will be, I'll put in det1. This will be a deterministic random variable with all of its mass at 1. It always takes one roll to see my first unique outcome. Now, the number of additional rolls to see my second unique outcome, I didn't have to get a 2 here. I could have gotten a 3 here, and it would have taken me a couple more rolls to get my, my next unique outcome. Well, the distribution of the number of rolls to get that second unique outcome will be geometric, and that's geometric with a capital G, geometric with a parameter. What is my success probability? Well, the probability of seeing a unique outcome at this point is 5, 6. x3 is my number of trials to see my third unique outcome. And in this case, I've had two numbers show up. So this will be geometric with a parameter of 4, 6. And x4, my fourth unique outcome, will be geometric with parameters with a parameter of 3 6 x5 is my fifth unique outcome this will be geometric with a parameter of 2 6 and finally waiting to get this last unique observation will be geometric with a parameter of 1 6 now the goal of this question is to find the expected value and the variance of the random variable x. So let's start with the expected value of x. Well, you know x is the sum of these six random variables. So this will be the expected value of the sum from i equals 1 up to 6 of x sub i. The expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected value. Now, these random variables happen to be independent. But even if they were dependent, this would work. So because they're of the expected value of the sum being the sum of the expected values, you can write this in this fashion. And now what we want to figure out 
is the expected value of all of these x sub i values. What is the expected value of x1? Well, the number of trials to get our first unique outcome is always just one roll. So a deterministic one distribution has a mean of one. How about a geometric with a capital G of 5, 6? If you go back to the geometric distribution, the reciprocal of the parameter here is the mean. So the mean here is 6 fifths. The mean here is 6 fourths. And on it goes. 6 thirds, 6 halves. And then this last one here, we got very fortunate. It only took us two rolls to get it, but its expected value is 6. And when you add all of those up, you get 14.7. So you expect 14.7 rolls to get your first, to get to see all of the six numbers. So our particular realization here with just eight rolls was much shorter than you would expect. The second part of the question is to find the variance of the number of rolls. And in this case, the variance of the number of rolls is the variance of the sum. And this is the same sum from i equals 1 up to 6 of x sub i. Now, in this particular case, the variance of the sum will be the sum of the variances. And that allows these two to kind of track along the same path here. But the reason for that is each one of these random variables is independent. Once you get to your, for example, your second unique number, then when you start in waiting for your third unique number, um, that will be independent of how long it took you to get to your, your first or your second unique number. So this turns out to be the variance of x sub i. So at this point, all we have to do is go back to the uh, definition for the geometric random variable and determine all these variances. First of all, the variance of a deterministic one random variable, that has a variance of 0. So that one's pretty easy. Now, the variance of the geometric 5, 6 random variable is 1 minus p, which will be 1, 6, divided by p, which is 5, 6 squared. So that is the variance. In this next case, you will get 2 6 divided by 4 6 squared. This will continue on until the last term. And the last term will be 5 6 divided by 1 6 squared. When you add all of those up for the variance of the number of rolls that it takes you until you see all of the uh, unique values, this turns out to be 38.99. If you are nervous about these numbers, 14.7 and 38.99, you can run a Monte Carlo simulation. So on the next page here, is a Monte Carlo simulation that is written in R. And in this particular Monte Carlo simulation, there will be 100,000 experiments. And x is initialized to a vector of 100,000 values. And so here is position 1. And I'll indicate this is x sub 1. And this will be the first experiment. I'll go ahead and put an 8 in here because that was our first trial from before. And then maybe when we run the second string to get to um, six unique values, maybe this time it takes a long time. Maybe this time it's 29. And this goes all the way down to our 100,000 different trials. And maybe on the 100,000th, maybe. Uh, Maybe we got uh, 15, which is a number that's very close to the average. So those are all initialized to 0 up front. And eventually, they are going to be filled with the number of rolls necessary to get all six of the numbers to appear. Then within each of the trials here, 
there is a vector y which has six elements and they are all initialized to zero. So there will be a y1 through y6 all initialized to zero and then furthermore there will be a variable known as numrolls and that is also initialized to zero. So these are all zeros and so while the product of the values in y is equal to zero well initially you will get a zero for the product of all of these and in fact you'll continue to get a zero for the product of all of these until all of these get changed to some non-zero value so my num rolls which is originally zero gets incremented to one and then roll is the ceiling of our unif of 1, 0, 6. This is the, basically the roll of the die. You could use the sample function or you could use the ceiling function. But in this case, I, I chose to use the ceiling function. And this will be a 1 through 6 with equal probability. Well, let's say it comes in, for example, as what we had before on our first roll. It comes in as a 3. If it comes in as a 3, then y sub 3, the third element of 3 of, of y, will get set will get changed from a 0 to a 1 and you run through this loop as long as you have still a number that you haven't seen yet and when you finally get all done you will set x sub i to num rolls and in our realization that took eight different values and that value gets put right up into here Finally, you calculate the mean of x and the variance of x. And when I ran this five times, I got 14.72, twice 14.71, 14.67, 14.74. These are hovering about my analytic value of 14.7. So that supports my first value. And when I print out the variance of the values of x, I get 39.3, 38.9, 38.9, 38.2, 39.7. Those values are hovering around 38.99. So in this case, my Monte Carlo simulation is supporting my analytic value.